So, um, in the last video, we introduced this mean value theorem for integrals. I mentioned that it has something to do with this idea of average, right? Um, and in fact, we can make this as a definition that the, the average value of a function over some interval a, b is just 1 over the length of that interval times the integral from a to b of fx times dx, right? So what you're doing here is you're, you're finding that y value so that when you, you get that rectangle where, you know, you do height times width for the rectangle, you get an area which is equal to the area under the curve, right? So, so this should give you some sense of average value, right? Um, if, we, if, the, if our function just had this constant value all the way across, we would get the same area as we would get uh, with the actual varying function that we have, right? If you think in terms of velocity, right, we're saying that if you moved at this constant speed, you would travel the same distance as you would travel if you moved with this varying speed that we have described by this function, right? So that's exactly what we usually mean by average velocity or average speed. Um, so it makes sense, okay? Another way to think about this is, right, if you had, if you had your partition, think about Riemann sums for a second. So if you have a partition, so A is x1 less than x2 less than x3 and so on down to xn and plus 1, which is our B, and you choose points, all right, so you choose these points, say ci, in each interval. Well, then we know that our Riemann sum, so let's see, so delta x is going to be, all right, if we do a uniform partition, b minus a over n. So we know that our integral is approximately sum i going from 1 to n, f of ci times our delta x, which is b minus a over n, okay? Now, divide both sides by b minus a. That gives us the average, right? Or what we want to think of as average. And what do we have? Well, the b minus a is gone. Now you just have 1 over n times this sum. What you have is f at c1 plus f at c2, so on, down to f at cn over n, right? So what you've done here is you, you've kind of, we think, you know, I don't know, some kind of like pseudo-statistical approach here that, that, you know, you can't really write down a continuum of values, right? You could write down a function, but you're not going to write down, you know, infinitely many values. But you could take some sample, right? So you choose some sample points between A and B, you evaluate the function at each of those sample points, and then you average them, right? And that gives you a, well, it's not an equality, but it gives you a reasonable approximation for the average value computed by the integral. So you can see that there is this connection between this notion of average that we have for just a finite list of values compared to this notion of average for a continuously varying function, right? They're, they're very similar ideas. They look very different at first, but they are, in fact, very similar ideas. So this now gives us a tool to calculate averages for quantities where they are continuously varying rather than just having some discrete set of values.